Child Free by Choice. Presented by Stilla Frog. I'm a teacher, which means every single day I stand before a classroom of eight and nine year olds ready to answer their questions. From the semi rational, Miss Caldwell, does the sun ever melt? Because, you know, it's like so hot. To the, seriously, Miss Caldwell, why do Eskimos wear such heavy coats? Okay, admittedly, sometimes my patience does wear a bit thin, but I love kids. I really do. You cannot be an elementary school teacher and not love kids. They're like these little seedlings waiting to be watered and given nourishment and sun and all the other stuff that makes them grow. And I am happily a part of the process. I would not have it any other way. However. And this is a big however, a however that often gets me side-eye and perplexing glances, if not that WTF are you talking about mouth agape stare. Yes, I'm looking at you, Mom. I do not want kids of my own. I had a revelation a few years ago that becoming a mom was just not something I wanted to do. Totally by choice. That's the thing. If you say you don't want to have kids, people, people automatically equate that to you not being able to have kids. And at that point, people... Some relative strangers, mind you, will start making comments about my uterus. I'm just like, WTF, dude, focus on your own damn uterus. You know what I mean. It's like having kids is the duty of every woman, and heaven forbid you don't fulfill your duty. Well, then you're somehow an enemy of the state. Sorry, I I didn't mean for this to come out all rant-like. I just, I'm content with my choice to remain child-free. Child free by choice, which incidentally has become my personal mantra. People will be like, So you're a teacher? Yep, I say. And the inevitable follow up question, Do you have any kids of your own? Nope, I say, quickly throwing out, Child free by choice. Okay, so you must be thinking to yourself, We get it, lady. You don't want to have kids. Point taken. Sheesh. I just want to give you a little background before telling you about the greatest week of my life. I'm talking about seven days of bliss. Seven days of the kind of tingly feelings that you only find in movies. Of romance that deserves a standing ovation. It was so damn good. Of a spirit level completeness that I'd never imagined possible. His name was Josh. Josh was tall, handsome, quirkily funny, and had a great body and a sharp wit. Josh was just amazing. Amazing to the point where he makes the Hallmark movie dudes, those super smooth open doors for you, bouquet of roses in hand, always dressed to the nines kind of guys, look like Cousin Eddie, the blue bathrobe out by the sewer grate version. Anyway, Josh and I were fixed up through a mutual friend. Our first date was a carnival. I know, on its surface, maybe kind of cheesy. But when you're in it, when you're three stories up in that Ferris wheel locked in a small enclosure on a perfect summer night with a gorgeous man who's intent on making you laugh because, oh yeah, you have a teeny tiny fear of heights that you neglected to mention because of, well, everything I said before, fear of heights, it's anything but cheesy. Oh, and he won me a gigantic stuffed gorilla. Too sweet for words, right? Our second date was more typical, and still, it was anything but, because it was with Josh. A French restaurant, candles, expensive wine, a tableside violinist to boot. Now, come on, ladies, that's what I'm talking about. Date number three, well, that was just magic wrapped inside of a sparkly rainbow that led to a gargantuan field of roses with tiny chocolates nestled inside the petals. And that is all I'm going to say about that date. That one is all for me. Then there were two more dates, and yes, inside of a week, one amazing toe-curling week of Josh. How could this get any better? I had the instinct to pinch myself because surely I was dreaming, right? This was a soul connection that I'd honestly not experienced before. I mean, this could be the guy, the one, the till death do us part guy. It was all right there. I was this close to being out of the Resigned to Singlehood Forever Club and becoming a married part of the Mr. and Mrs. Eat Your Heart Out Club. And then, the talk. Mind you, this had only been a week of dating. Every night for six consecutive days, we clicked that much. On the seventh date, yeah, you could say Cupid definitely rested. Josh had made an amazingly delicious dinner. What didn't this guy do? And we were on his sofa watching some show about carnivorous plants that started taking over the world and and turning people into carnivorous seedlings in training when Josh said something to the effect of, that's it, no ficuses around our kids. And I'm like, what? 
And he said, was that the wrong word? Is it Fikai? And I said, no, the around our kids part. And then he's like, I'm sorry. I was just, I mean, this is going so well. And I was in part just kind of joking about that and in part kind of not too. And he started to get all red. And I said, yeah, I agree. This is the best week of my life so far as dating goes. And it's not that you said it. It's what you said. That's when I took a big, deep breath in and just came right out with it. I don't plan to have kids. Ever. And his first response was, of course, oh, I didn't mean to. I mean, if you can't have kids, then we could always. It's not that I can't have kids, I interrupted. I don't want to have kids. There's a difference. His face dropped at that point. I just wasn't prepared for how much it was going to drop. But you're a teacher, he said. So I then said, and if you were, say, an entomologist, does that mean we'd live in a house where bugs were allowed to roam free? That's not the same thing, and you know it, he said. And then he got up off the couch. And in that moment, when his feet hit the floor and he stood up, I knew that some fundamental link in the short-lived chain of us had been irrevocably broken. I'm sorry, he said. I guess I just didn't realize you didn't want to have kids. Duh, how could you? It's only been six fucking days. But I didn't say that. Instead, I said something way more penetrating, like, oh, well, then. I was taking it all in, the end of the relationship, like a train wreck in slow motion almost. Because yes, tragically, I could see that this had ended. I'd lost guys before, a couple of them, a couple who saw themselves as dads and I couldn't fulfill that vision for them. But Josh was, for a moment, my mind flickered, kind of like when the electricity goes off, but only for a second. I flickered. My thoughts about the future, seeing myself as the perennial not-mom, a happy professional childless couple traveling on a whim, it all flickered. Perhaps I'd been too hasty. And then the lights came back on, and I knew that I had to be true to myself. It was a commitment I'd made to myself. Giving in on the kid thing, well, it wasn't what I wanted or needed, no matter how hard I'd fallen. Maybe, I thought, just maybe... His lights would flicker, and he'd see my side of things. This was Josh, right? But then, look, he began, I just, I don't know if this can work. I always pictured myself with a family, like a big family, maybe three or four kids, he explained in a broken-hearted, overly earnest kind of way. And I laughed. I didn't mean to. I think it was just a nervous reaction. It's not funny, he bit back. I know. I'm sorry, I just... You can't ever see yourself as a mom? Isn't that what most women want, he asked? And now it was my turn to be mad. Maybe, but I'm not most women. Now I was standing up, another link in the chain, broken. This is going nowhere, he mumbled under his breath. What did you just say? I snapped at him. I said, this is going nowhere, he repeated. I agree, I said. And then I left. Not exactly a Hollywood ending for Josh and me. Not any kind of ending for Josh and me. A sad story, I know. <laughs> Far from Hallmark Channel worthy. Had all this prompted me to change my mind on the whole kid thing, you're probably wondering? No, it hasn't. And any man who is the right man will understand that. The only question is, will I ever meet him? Uh -huh.